You are watching a Fact TV presentation of the town of Swansea. For the August 23rd special meeting of the planning board here at Wickham Hall, I'll begin with the roll call. Scott Self, that's me, I'm here. Richard Lane. Here. Uh, Jane Johnson. Here. Brandon Self. Here. Michael York. Here. Victoria Ames. Here. Suckman's rep Ken Colby. He's not here. Steve Malone, alternate. Here. Alternate Michael Scungio. Not here. Alternate Brian Vertigal. Not here. And before we get started, there's something to do with the microphones that we need to discuss, Julius? Yeah, so the general gist is that um, we're trying to improve the quality of the mics and the recording, so we ask that if you come up to the mic, uh, please make sure one, it's on, and that you say, you know, your name, where you're from, be very clear and precise with it, also get closer to it if you can, uh, and it'll help pronunciate it outwards towards the rest of the crowd here, but it's also for those online. If, you, if you're talking from the seat, it's not possible for them to hear you, so it's not only those that are live, but it's also the recording later on. Thank you. Okay, that being said, we'll get to order here of what's going on. What we're doing is a special meeting and we're discussing uh, zoning for North Swansea, as I'm sure you all know you're here for. And it's up around the Wilson Pond area. We had some discussions uh, earlier on about what should be allowed there, what is allowed there now, what isn't allowed there. And out of that came up three separate proposals, one for a a village business district which was proposed by the residents and with uh, certain uses in it. It's zoned business now and uh, you can all see where those zonings are with that blue on that map over there. That's that's what we're talking about, that area of Swansea. And, and the possibility of rezoning it all to residential district. So with those districts come different uses of what can be done with the property. And I've mentioned it before, and Bear is mentioning again that uh, zoning is is a right. You know, it's, it's the country is built on private property rights and ownership of property and being able to do what you want with your property within reason. And that's where the zoning comes in to make it more or less fair, so your neighbor doesn't really uh, restrict you from using your property for a certain way, and vice versa. So it's a form of taking, as I had mentioned before, that. Uh, you can, we'll say the residential district has fewer opportunities to use your property than the business district or the industrial district. So uh, that's a, a give and take there. As to property values, that's not for the planning board really concerned, but it kind of is because if you take away somebody's ability to develop their property, you're kind of taking away some of the value of their property. But again, it's to be fair, and that's what we're doing here, trying to keep it fair. And the, let's see, I think what we can start on, I guess, is just go right down the list of what is allowed now in the zone, just to let everyone know what can be done in that zone right now, being zone district. I mean, okay. I think they have, um, if, if everyone has one of these, it's a spreadsheet of, of what's in there. If not, we have a few extras here, but I'll just read down the, on the list of uh, what is allowed in the in the zoning district, and that's our business district, which is, that's the zone now. And, let's see. What is it? zone now is uh, a restaurant can be put anywhere in that business district, and educational, governmental, or religious facility can put in anywhere in that district, and a hotel, motel, inn, bed or breakfast facility. Professional and business offices can go anywhere in there. Retail sales services bank or financial institution, funeral home, private club or lodge, and commercial greenhouse or nursery can go there, home occupation and home-based businesses, and function halls, indoor auctions, recreation facility, a facility conducted as a business, research and development, and accessory uses which are incidental to the permitted use. And in addition to that, there are uses that are permitted as a, a special exception when it's gone through the Board of Adjustment. And again, I'm just reading these to let you know what's allowed there now. What can go in under a special exception after the ZBA looks at it would be daycare facility, a gasoline service station, repair garage or a body shop, motor vehicle dealership, wholesale warehousing or manufacturing facility, industrial park, vehicle wash facility, self storage facility, and let's see, multifamily dwellings, and that, and 
actually in the removal of, and processing of clay, sod, loam, crushed stone, sand, or gravel for sale, and drive through facility, licensed nursing home, hospital, bulk storage, and distribution of large quantities of material, liquid, solid, or gaseous intended for resale. So that's a lot of uses. That's a lot of stuff that can go in down there. And that's part of the problem of, of why you got together and wanted to talk to the board about it. And we see your, your point. So, Could you speak to, to housing? Because housing is not a permitted use. Well, housing is not a permitted use right in, in, the, the, business in the business district. And that, this is residential housing units, single family units you're talking about. Yeah. Because the multifamily housing is, is allowed, as we know, uh, yeah. under the special exception. But what if somebody wanted to build a house? What if somebody by some miracle had a, a big lot and wanted to build a house? What would happen? Well, what would happen is they would have to get a variance from the ZBA, and that's why the ZBA is there. One of the reasons the ZBA is there to give variances, because not one shoe fits all, and, and yes, yeah, somebody had a, a lot there that they wanted to build a house on, and it met the criteria of uh, issuing a variance, then they should be allowed and probably would be allowed to do it. But that's not an allowable use in the business district, which, again, doesn't fit the district that most of these people live in. It's mostly residential up there. So that's another one of the reasons for changing. And right from there, I'll go right into actually what can be proposed in a, a scaled down version of the business village district one. That Mrs. Scalera, Scalera, is that your name, Mrs. Scalera? Yes. That Mrs. Scalera brought up to us uh, a few weeks ago. And that would be a separate business district three as you presented it. And we already have a uh, Village Business District 1, which has most of that stuff in it. But I think I'll read as what it would knock out of the Business District if we went for the Business or Village Business District 1. So it would, well, add into it. It would add in single family dwellings to that district, which it should, anyways, because they're mostly single family dwellings in that district. So it would add that in. It would remove hotel, motel, inn. It would leave bed and breakfast facility. Let's see, it would, it would remove funeral home. It would remove commercial greenhouse or nursery. It would remove function halls. It would remove indoor auctions. Remove recreation facility conducted as a business, but it would allow under a special exception, but it would remove it from a uh, allow the use as a right, and it would remove research and development. So, under the uh, special exception uses that it would remove, which is quite a few, it would add in the recreational facility conducted as a business as long as it was conducted indoors. And it would remove, and I'm just going to run down the list here, um, it would remove a gasoline service stations, repair garage or body shop, motor vehicle dealership, wholesale warehousing or manufacturing facility, industrial park, vehicle wash facility, self storage facility, and it would remove the removal of process and processing of clay, sod, loam, crushed stone, sand, or gravel. And it would remove the drive through facility, uh, remove licensed nursing home, remove hospital, and remove bulk storage. So I know that's a lot of stuff, you know, might be glazing over of all these, these uses and stuff there, but that's quite a bit removed from there. And the majority of those, in my opinion anyways, reading it over, the majority of those would probably not be um, utilized uses in that district anyway, up and, up and through there, because of its, its primarily the residential and smaller lot sizes in there. The I'll, I'll hit on the, th the third one is to put it into residential use. And residential use has fewer uses, but I'm just going to run down them. We'll get to all this later. You have questions and stuff like that. We, we'll be discussing it more. It's just a lot to take in all at once. But residential uses, you can have a single family dwelling and customary agriculture uses like gardens, nurseries, and greenhouses, things like that. Roadside stands for the sale of homegrown produce. Uh, home occupation, accessory uses, which are clearly incidental to the property. And under special exceptions, let me see, then under special exceptions in the residential, you can have multifamily dwellings, you can have two family dwellings, 
Uh, you can have daycare facility, educational, governmental, or religious facility, rooming or boarding house, bed and breakfast facility, which opens up quite a bit there. Those are some of the things that were being removed from the actual business district there, those uses there. But under special exception, you can have those in that residential use, which is something to think about. And let's see, and uh, the lot size would be a little bit different. Residential lot size is bigger. It would be one acre with 150 foot frontage. In that business district one, the lot size would be a half an acre and 100 foot frontage on the road, which again is probably more in keeping with what's there now. So, having said on that, any questions on, on that? We'll go back through all those uses, but any questions on any of those uses and stuff that, that we're just talking about? So, Jim? Yes. Just for a point of clarification, any existing use that is existing as of right or by special exception or variance or whatever, yep. after we make, the, if these changes are made, those existing uses will be able to remain. They will be grandfathered in, but if they cease to be used, I think that you have two years to, to start it up again. But if, say it's a business and it's zone residential and the business is grandfathered in there, the business closes down, they've got two years, I think it is, to bring it back up again. If not, it just reverts back to that residential part of it there. I think I'm... My, you know, excuse me, my understanding uh, is they have a two-year uh, window, but in order to come back, it has to be the same type of business. Right. Yes, right. Yep, you're right. right. From what yep. I understand. That is correct. Thanks for pointing that out. That's okay. right. And the only way to alter that would be through special exception. Or like variance. Yep. Variance. Yeah, yeah. it has to be a variance in that regard. So, yeah, that's the answer to that. Yep. I just wanted to clarify that. So reading through all of this, I've read through all of this, and we've discussed it at other meetings and, and all, and in my opinion, I think it would be fair to most of the property owners and, and a better solution to bring it on as a business dis or village business district one with the modification to that village district, uh, village business district with the uses on there. And again, I will just read those down as it be proposed, and I'll try and point out some of the dif differences there. In the proposed village business district one, and if this were to be that district, what would be allowed would be a one-family dwelling, single-family dwelling, which there are a lot of them there, obviously. A restaurant would be allowed. A bed and breakfast facility would be allowed. <coughs> uh, professional business offices, club or a lodge, retail business establishment, personal service shop or service establishment, banking or financial institution, and home occupation. And manufactured housing is allowed in that zone as well. Let's see. And on a special exception, there would only be recreational facility, uh, facility conducted as a business only when such business activity is conducted indoors and daycare facility. So that would be... I did say flood and lodge. Uh, I mean, yeah, I did say club and lodge. And what did you say on that? Oh, and not permitted in that? Okay. Yeah, because there was a difference. I know the original one, I think, that you gave to us that was not in there, the club or lodge. And this one here that, that we have, it is. So, yeah, that could be crossed out. So, that would be club or lodge. I'm sorry, which one? Club or lodge as a use oh, in there, as a use, and that's the proposed business, I mean, Village right. Business District 1, because we already have the Village yeah, Business West District down. 1 already exists in town, and it's down in Swan West Swansea here along Winchester Street and up that side of Main Street and one parcel over there, uh, maybe it might be Swansea Street now, um, that's what, it's already there. So anyways, all of those uses are relatively low impact uses compared especially to what's allowed there now. And that was the intent. Oh, uh, go ahead. There were, I was, I was just using, I was going over uses now, but yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah. You can keep me on my toes. I'll, I'll mention everything. If you don't, if I don't, you can. Yeah, push me. But, you know, getting to that, the, uh, 
let's get on to that subject. And we're talking about the, um, again, on my proper page here, so I'm correcting what I'm stating here. And it's the multifamily dwelling density part of it. And it's proposed to uh, have, and this is typical in all of the zones, one acre for the first dwelling unit and one half acre for each additional dwelling unit unless connected to the sewer, which all that area up there is sewered anyway, so it would pertain this way, which would be the maximum density permitted for a multifamily dwelling connected to the sewer would be six units per acre. So, again, reading all, reading all of this. Oh, no, that's residential. Uh, I think residential density is three. Yeah, yeah. And business one is, is, uh, is proposed to six. Business itself is eight right now. Eight is allowed there now. But what I'm wondering is if we take that out of that business one, village business one district and don't allow the multifamily housing at all in that district. It's not a very large district. It's a small district. And we, we still allow for it in business and we allow for it in residential districts different densities. That's a possibility just to leave it out altogether. This, the state wants you to, uh, in your zoning, our zoning, all the town zoning, to, um, to allow multifamily and workforce housing in the majority of the districts that allow residential use like that. And this may not, it may or may not be in the majority under their Jurisdiction there, but we again we do allow it. It's twelve actually. Twelve units. Oh, in business. Yeah. Okay, it's twelve in business. Sorry, twelve in business. So again, we allow it in the business zone, and we allow it in the residential zone, and we allow it now in this uh, village business one. And I don't know what the board, rest of the board thinks about it, or but I'm, I'm saying that we don't allow it in that one and just allow it in the other one because we do, that's quite a bit of the town that it is still allowed in. I would agree with that because when you get up, the way it is written now, you have the same situation that's going on over there right now where you've got a uh, small piece of property with a lot of units going in. So I think that was a good idea to pull that out of the multifamily. Okay. Yeah, I agree too. So I guess we'll move on. That's, that's a possibility then in writing this up that we leave that out of there. And, uh, anybody have comments on that? Yeah. Oh, you like it, you said. Okay. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. So, let's see. What else have I forgotten here? Let's make a comment. Pardon me? Oh. Yeah. 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 I figure instead of yelling from the gallery, I'll come up here. Um, so just, um, you know, I want to thank you all for, for the last last session, right? I think we had a very good dialogue uh, sitting around talking about this proposal. Um, if you might recall during my intro, you know, I said this was a compromise that, you know, we felt we would prefer to be residential, but we needed to present something we felt would be amenable to the board. And we were very happy with the outcome when the conversation came around to residential. Um, I think maybe we could do a show of hands if that's appropriate. Um, I think majority of these people would prefer to see it residential as their primary, you know, goal. Um, certainly, the village business district one modified as we're talking about would be this a, a, a compromise, a secondary goal, right? But I, the people here. And I wouldn't mind doing a show of hands just for my sake, because I know I spoke to a lot of people, not all these people here, um, but um, there's a lot more people I spoke to who are not here. And everybody says, just make it residential. It's densely populated. It's residential now. Uh, you know, we, we, we respect the businesses that are there, and that's what we would hope for. So if appropriate, you want to just put yeah. your hands up? Show of hands. Show of hands Keep if you'd like to see residential. residential. And it looks like just about everybody in the room practically is raising their hands. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to make that point. Okay. So just bear in mind then, if it's residential, the lot size will be one acre and the frontage will be 150 feet. And multifamily use will be allowed 
uh, three units per acre in residential. So it will be allowable use in that. And also, an allowable use will be, under special exception, daycare facility, educational, governmental, or religious facility, rooming or boarding house, bed and breakfast facility. Excuse me. On the, yes. On our chart here, the residential use, not, we're talking residential only. Right? That's right, yeah. It says on this uh, multifamily special exception. Yeah, special exception. But it's, it's an allowable, not, you know, not by right allowable, but it's allowable under special exception. And it's three units per acre. And it's three per acre is the yeah. density on that, if it's on a, if it's on a public sewer. So just bear in mind, that's that's what's allowed there. You're, a little bit more is allowed in that if it's residential, and almost probably the majority of the, ha of the lots will be non-conforming in there because of that because it's one acre required and 150 foot front is required on there. So, so, so what's the, can you explain the implication of that, a non-conforming lot? What's um, the downside to having a non-conforming The downside is that uh, anything you want to do to it, you have to go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. You know, if you want to change it somewhat, you know, the, I think change the house even, I think even change a porch on it. I'm not sure about that one. But. Any increase in square footage would require review by the Zoning Board. Yeah, <clears throat> such as an ADU. Yeah, that. Yeah, anything that you want to do to the property, if you're on an unconforming lot, you have to go to the zoning board of adjustment uh, to do it. But but the business district is already one acre. Right? It is. So it's not really a change, except for more frontage would be required in the front in the residence district versus the business well, district. It's probably not going to remain business, right? I mean, we're probably in agreement that that area is not going to remain. But I'm business. just saying that's what people are used to. That's what well, they've always had. That's what they. Have. I don't know if they're used to it, but that's <laughs> what they have. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it's been that way for a long time. It has. Yeah. But again, it's an eye opener when you when you finally hear what actually is allowed to go next door to your property. You know, you might have been living there 50 years and not really know what was in the zoning ordinance, what could go by, or what your lot size was, whether you're non-conforming or conforming, until you go and say, I want to put an addition on my house, and say, well, you know, you've got to go to the CBA for that and all these other groups you got to jump through. But it's an eye-opener to know that, so we're informing people that. Yes. If we were to change this to residential, formal use, yep. and I have a non-conforming lot, and I want to put up a relatively small storage shed for my own personal use. Would I be required to go to the uh, zoning board for it? Depends how small. I think uh, it's 200 square feet. If you had, if the, I wanted to do a three, three or four hundred square foot. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah you would. So let's see. No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you have a? I just have a quick question. Yes. Uh, what is the minimum lot size? What is the minimum lot size in the village district? Uh, that would be one half acre. Half acre. Yep. And the frontage would be 100 feet. Is what's proposed. I th actually, I think they have that now. Come to think. That's of it. what's in the plan. Yeah. Question yep. two. Um, it's more towards the people. I wasn't at the last meeting. Could you but, state your name, please? Uh, Kristen Chesley, 21 oh, Sylvan Way. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, I don't know, the village business district looks like it limits the multifamilies very well, but still leaves a lot of uh, more options of what you can do with your own land. And I'm just wondering why you all have chosen to go to the residential instead of the business, the village business, not the business district which is what we ran into on Sylvan Way, the problem. So we, we definitely want to change that, but why all the way to the residential instead of the village business district? Right, but you're causing the lots to be larger. Well, um, could you just come up to the mic? Because I don't think anybody online can hear you. That's what you meant. Yeah, OK. So what we saw when we looked at the map and uh, looked at the, pr the properties is we, we know it's a very densely settled, single, mostly single family dwelling area. And there are some established businesses. And, you know, it's, it just seems like that's what that area just represents, to just be a residential area and not have to... Uh, you know, fight the Avenues with their projects and, and you know, the uh, 
Eleven Sylvan Way, and it was just a way of just being done with uh, really what's been a bit of a nightmare for some of us uh, for the last, you know, three years or so. So uh, you, you've seen our faces many times in many meetings, um, and yeah, we're just looking to kind of be done with it, and uh, you know, but that, that's that's our reason. So. I understand. Um, I just would like to mention that when I'm looking at Village uh, Business One amended uses under the new proposals, that it really doesn't, it, it, it limits us less on if we have more than a half acre property of what we can personally do with our own property. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm not looking to um, put more restrictions on anybody except for ridiculous things like 11 Sylvan Way when they were trying to put multi-family units in there. I myself have a um, DADU, a detached accessory dwelling unit, and it's on less than one acre of land, which I would have had more restrictions in trying to do that if we, move, if we were in actually in a residential district. Um, so I just think it's something to consider when looking at it both, is actually looking at the future too, and which one really make sure that we don't have these workforce housing, these ridiculous things that don't belong in our neighborhood, but also still remain open to possibilities of how to use our land in the future that don't restrict us as much. Just okay. something I want people to consider. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it, it falls under the whole category of it being fair to all property owners because we're all property owners and we have a right to use our property and do within reason. And again, yes, that's a good point. So on just for fairness. clarity, are, you're saying that it's primarily the acreage size that's your concern? That's, that's a bigger issue for you than the actual permitted uses? No, no. permitted uses are, are, are an issue, but as, as I'm looking at this here, the uh, permitted would you, uses please are, are kind of like, Just come up to the mic again. <laughs> When I, I'm looking at the proposal for one and two for the village business one amended uses and the residents existing yes. uses, um, neither of them allow the multifamily dwelling of 12 units of an acre. Right. Neither of them do. Where I come out preferring one is the lot sizes. Okay. Um, so I, I do want to limit multifamilies. Both of them do. Um, although residents does allow multi-family dwelling i mean i mean the multi-family the village business business district allows a special exception on six units an acre um so no i i want to limit and they both do limit that 12 units an acre mm -hmm. that's excessive that's okay. kind of crazy in our area um but the village business district limits us less on other things and one of those is the lot size and what we can do with the lot. And that's just why my feeling is that I would prefer to see us go to a village business one rather than residence. And it's all a compromise anyway. Zoning is a compromise. No one gets exactly what they want. Uh, give a little and take a little, that type of a thing. But just to remind you that we, we were discussing tonight at the board here limiting or actually removing the multifamily uh, uses from that village business one district and leaving them in leaving them in the other districts as they are now it's a possibility and, and we would have to keep them in the residence district because we have there's so much more space in town that already is zoned residence there is and in the business district too there's a lot in the business district around um, and yeah that's a lot of area there yeah. Any other questions on any of that? Any uses or things like that? Let's see. How about from the board? I'll take a look at my paper here. This is sorry. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm very patient. Um, so no, I, I hear what the, the woman's saying, and it makes it makes sense. Yep. Um, so. Uh, the fact that we're considering removing the multifamily altogether is wonderful, right? Um, the other thing that came up at the last meeting, um, and we should probably talk about it at some point here, is the bed and breakfast facilities. And we, we talked about 
come, maybe coming up with a maximum number of beds. Um, so it can't just be, you know, a huge building with, you know, 24 beds in it or something, right? Um, because that's essentially getting close to a hotel or whatever. Um, so that should probably get discussed at some point. Um, yeah, and that would cover more than just this zone. That would be all, um, I think, business uh, residential too, I think. I have to check with that, but that would have to be a change in definition in general, I think, mm -hmm. for all of the zones, not necessarily just the specific zone. Okay. But it's a good point, right? We don't want them circumventing the zoning and right, saying it's a bed and breakfast and being a hotel. Wouldn't parking limit them, though, <clears throat> as far as how many beds they could yeah. have? Parking would. Yeah. Just don't bring that up. Just a quick question, Vicki Scalera. You state your name, please. Vicki Vicky Scalera. What, are there any restrictions on the retail? Like, so this says retail business. Are there size restrictions? Are there, uh, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to those, see. From all here. those things are dealt with on the, the planning board as a meeting tonight. Site plan review, as far as the size of the lot, the parking, and landscaping, and all those types of things, and what the business actually is. So. It's pretty much on an individual basis how that is done. So if there are small lots, it would be a small business. If there are large lots, it could be a larger business. Setbacks and... Pardon me? No, there aren't too many... Yeah, that's again, while we're discussing this, there aren't too many large lots up that area there. The underlying retail businesses, I just have the thought of them. Be created within the existing footprint of the building that's there. Because, Probably because they are non-conforming. Um, they they're non-conforming if they're residential, but if it's in business district or uh, village business one, it would be allowable use an allowable use on a lot. Okay, but could it still not be within the existing footprint? Uh, probably not. That's a little restrictive because we have setbacks and property setbacks, front setbacks, side and rear setbacks for building wise. So that pretty much designates the size of the building that can be put on the lot. You know, we, we probably are overstepping our bounds if we're saying that, yeah, you can set up a business on that lot, but you have to set it in that little tiny bungalow that's sitting on there. You know, you, you can't really take that away from the property owner. Okay, so Therefore, if it's a non-conforming lot and they're going to put a business in there and they're going to make it larger than what is already there, it, it, it probably how wouldn't fly. To, how are you going to do it? Because it, it has to go through the zoning board of adjustment if it's a non-conforming lot and then the size. And so it probably would not fly unless they had a really good reason as to why. So I also had some other suggestions here. I'm going to use that map up there just to point them out here. So, all I hear we're talking about up here, we're talking about some sand. All of us through to the key line right there. So, this, this piece, piece right here Yeah, I forgot about the mic. <laughs> Here I am telling you guys about the mic and I forgot about it. Well, at least I don't have to introduce myself anyway. So again, this is Route 12. There's businesses zone, zone business all the ways to here on Route 12, that area there. Right now, currently, it's zone business here and it's zoned like that. So there's a triangle right in the center of that yard, which is a stockyard, basically, which is, um, and I guess, I think is residential in there. And that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, rezoning this it makes more sense to me to stop this zoning right here at that piece and leave it. So this would be business right here. So the business line would continue right to there and go right up there along their frontage. There are a few pieces of property up there which are uh, still would be 
in that business zone, those small pieces, probably not much could be done with them. But it'd make more sense to leave that business and, let's see, this, I think this is residential too. Isn't that that housing development up in there? Yeah, so that, that's apartment. So, so that could remain the business as well because that's allowed in the business district. Either way, it could go either way, but I'm thinking that that piece doesn't make sense to put in this whole thing. Go ahead. What do you have there? We have there. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see, they've got it. They've got a zone right about through the center of that piece, right? That's right here. We're talking about right there. That triangle I'm talking about is right there. Isn't that right here? Yeah, that triangle is right there. And it just doesn't make sense to me to have that triangle right there. The business comes right to the edge of these lines here. Follows those property lines right there. Makes sense to have the business line come right across there and stop there. And whatever this ends up being zoning, whether it's residential or business one, down and through here, as you as is shown here, to the dam, which is I guess right there. The new zone. Yeah. That would just stay the business. It's probably going to remain business. It's borders business. business. Yep. And there's not much else it's affecting, and it's not really affecting too much across the street. You know, the, the apartment place is there, but I'm just saying that as, as something that we can do. If we're going to do that. You guys probably didn't say I was, you, as in, so I was even over there, but we can discuss it on the smaller pieces there. That's the airport road, yep. These two right here. And, and the, <laughs> so, but those would be, I would say anyways, in the new zone, whatever zone it happens to be right there, because then that's that large piece of property with the housing development on it. on this side here, and from there south on this side here, and that remains residential, still saying residential. This would just be the new, whatever zone it happens to be there, which there are mainly houses, some businesses there. And down to the dam, which I believe is right in there someplace. So this, this land over here being on the airport, that's always gonna be probably like that, too close to the runway, they aren't gonna do anything with that. These are the hangars probably, they have T hangers there. These are the hangars there. Those are probably just gonna stay like that, I would assume, even though they'd be in that new zone down and through there. Let's see, or they yeah, wouldn't have to be actually, could stop it as it is there, but it's odd to have this piece here. So we probably wouldn't be putting that piece in the new zone. I think we talked about that at the last meeting. It's just like a little spot there. It doesn't really make sense to do that. So. Again, actually, I guess it could be from right there then. We've got the blue line tying together, we could be from there. So again, we're talking about a small piece right there, which shouldn't be a problem to um, leave out the multifamily in that section. Anyway, that's food for thought. So let's discuss the pros and cons of the whole thing. Anybody have anything to add on any of these things we've been discussing here? Uses uh, for or against? Is anyone for the business owned staying there? I don't think so. I don't see too many takers there. <laughs> I'll hold it. How's that? <laughs> okay. Just introduce yourself, please. Carol McIntyre Peel, 67 Old Homestead Highway. Um, we have been there for 36 years. We raised our children. They graduated from Mananoc. We're both retired. When we retired, we made a conscious decision to stay where we are because we like the small neighborhood. Even though we're on Route 32, we're nestled between 32 and the airport. We like that. Um, 11 Sylvan Way was a wake-up call. There, with this small village business district, a hotel could go in there. They have an acre and a half. They have a small little farmhouse. Let me check to make sure you're correct. You're probably correct, but I'm just well, checking. Well, that's what my notes here. I took when you read it. 
No, that's out. That's out of it. The hotel is in the business district, but not in the village business one. I know it's confusing. A lot of business going okay. on here. But it's not. It wouldn't be an allowable use in the proposed. Yeah, it's it's allowed now. Well, I wrote down. You said you they added in a single family homes, hotels, motels in. I probably said oh, that. Removed. I oh, probably removed. Removed. Okay. Didn't mean it. Let me just read it again. Let me read it. What's allowed there? On but, okay. Well, I'll I'll change it to um, then funeral home, functional hall, rec facility as long as it's inside. Research and development, am I correct on that? No, you aren't correct on that. I think you're reading the uses for the business district, not village business one. Where the okay. village business allowance, go ahead. I just, I just wrote it down as you read it. Oh. Well, <laughs> then I, I probably uh, should have specified what I was talking about. Okay. Well, what it is is the wake up call, is we have a small residential neighborhood what type of commercial businesses could be in our backyard. It's always a wake-up call, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. might have lived there as long as you have, but you didn't really realize what the heck could go in there until it, it's too late till you're at a planning board meeting saying what, what's going on here. So this is proactive. This is what you guys are doing now. So anyways, just let me clarify what would be in the proposed. I'm going to read those uses again. Pardon me? What, oh, she recorded what? Yeah, she, she may have, and I probably wasn't clear about that. So let me, yeah, oh yeah, I would too. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, anyways, under get my paper correct here. Under Village Business District One, the proposed uses would be a single-family dwelling, which there are plenty of them there now, a restaurant, a bed and breakfast facility, professional businesses and business offices retail business establishment, personal service shop or service establishment, banking or financial institution, and home occupation and home-based businesses. Also allowed in there are manufactured housing on individual lots, which is pretty much on, in all our zoning districts. We allow that's kind of standard stuff there. Accessory uses, which are clearly incidental to the permitted use. And now for the special exception uses, the following are permitted after the issuance of the special exception from the Board of Adjustment. And again, this is Village Business 1, the one we're proposing. Okay, it would be a, rec a recreational facility conducted as a business only when such business activity is conducted indoors and a daycare, daycare facility, and that's it. And there is a multifamily dwelling, but we're thinking about removing that. So the the other point I was going to make is one of the issues with the 11 Sylvan Way was the amount of traffic on a small dead end street. We live on Route 32. The amount of traffic is increasing. If you have a restaurant, banks, um, the retail, you're going to be adding a lot of that traffic to the area. Well, traffic is something that the planning board use when a site plan is proposed to the planning board. And Route 32, one of the reasons why that was put in business originally was because Route 32 is a kind of a corridor there, and there's a lot of traffic on that road, and rather than setting business uses up on dead-end streets or something like that where there isn't too much traffic altogether, it was proposed to be business along a route that is already taking traffic like that. But again, that's a business. That's why it was there originally. But now, again, traffic is an issue. The planning board looks at traffic. Um, Route 32, you probably wouldn't get too far with the, the traffic unless it was, no, these are all small, low usage, uh, yeah, low traffic usage or usage uh, uses. I guess that's a word, I don't know, for, that we're proposing here. You know, a restaurant. I don't know, bed and breakfast, not too much traffic there. Professional business offices, probably not either. You know, those are like a lawyer or an accountant, something like that. And we're talking about retail business establishment. That's like a convenience type of a store, retail there. Um, other small, again, the lots aren't very big there. We can't put anything very big on that, in that area there. Uh, 
uh, any small retail, mainly convenience store and things like that. Uh, let's see, personal service shop or service establishment. Um, that, again, uh, I could think of like a bicycle repair shop or something like that. That's a service shop. Or actually, it could even be a pet uh, service shop for that matter, you know, for a grooming or something. Or, yeah, or even a hairdresser. That's professional, something like that, but these, I think anyways, these are fairly low traffic uses there that we're talking about. Banking or financial institutions, up in that end of town, it probably wouldn't be a large TD bank or a Bank of America going in out there, maybe a branch perhaps, but it's so close to Keene, it's probably not going to happen. Um, let's see, what else we have on the list? And then just home occupation, home-based businesses. The, the other, under special exception, again, gets a little more scrutiny than, than the uses by right, but that's recreation facility and a daycare facility. So, traffic is always concerned, a concern, but again, it's, it's, it's fairness, and it's, it's to be uh, trying to be as fair as you can to each property owner. And again, it does go, any business goes through planning board approval, residents don't. You want to build a house, you don't come to the planning board. If you want to start a business, you do come to the planning board. And all the abutters are notified and come to the meetings and you state your opinion as to what it is. Sometimes, louder than me, sometimes. So, I know you have a concern there, but that's, uh, if this is changed, it's going to be changed from business by the looks of it, if the town votes it. You know, it's not a planning board decision. The planning board gets all the information like we're doing right now. So we can finally iron out the wording and all that type of what's with it. And then the planning board would have a public hearing. And public is allowed again to state their approval or disapproval of it. Uh, planning board would take a vote at that public hearing whether to put it on the warrant or not. If the planning board votes to go on the warrant, then it goes on there. Uh, if the planning board turns it down, then the residents can get a petition and put the same exact thing right up on the warrant. So, that, that's the procedure, and that's how it will go. And let's see. Now, yeah, any other, any questions for, um, on any of this uh, stuff here? Or, uh, yeah, well, that, that's another thing. I know, it, it's, it shouldn't be this way, but it's, it's if the planning board recommends it, you know, People in the other side of town, they don't know what's going on over there and say, well, the planning board said this is good, so uh, that's good for me. I'll check that right off. Or if the planning board doesn't recommend it, say, oh, the planning board doesn't want it, that's it for them. So so really, yeah, it bears a lot of weight what the planning board says about it. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, well, it'll probably end up being better. I would certainly think out of this. So, planning board members, how about about removing the multifamily? What does anybody think about that? Brandon, Let's do, do it. Think? Sure. That's a yeah. 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 Remove. Yep. Remove. Remove. Yep. Remove. Okay. So it looks like we will take that out. Take out that multifamily part of whatever new district is called there. And again. The other thing is, we already have a business district, village business district one, and it probably makes sense just to modify that one and apply it to this here rather than a whole bunch of different business districts. Yeah, in town. I agree with that too. Do you, all, do you all know that that's it's that little blue spot um, in West One? Yeah, it's where the village business is, right up Main Street here on this side of Main Street, and uh, Winchester Street, and one lot over here. So we'd be removing some of the uses from that business one, village business one district. But again, you take a look at that district, and I would say most of those things that are, that are going to be removed or proposed to remove would never be in there anyway. So we aren't really taking anything from those property owners. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, under the residence uh, district uses, uh, under the, just the, under customary agricultural, can we put, insert private after customary? Um, you're talking about residential district. Mm -hmm. and, and again, which one was it? Under uh, B. Just oh, B. Okay. Just insert private, meaning that 
you know, a person owns the property and put in a little garden or whatever, and if they have room enough, we don't get into a commercial uh, situation. We'll, we'll have to look into that. Maybe Julius might know this, but uh, I know the state is very liberal on what they allow for agricultural uses in in a residential zone. I do remember a certain attorney up keen there couldn't do something to his property and he decided to have a barnyard up in there and he was allowed to do it. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it, again, um, it looks like it's a consensus of the board that we might be going with a new village business district one and apply it to that area. Is that you agreeing or you still want to go to residential? Use? My interpretation is from what I heard is that they want to go residential. No, I No, I I think I think if they went residential they'd be kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit there. They'd be making more properties non-conforming than, than less. This makes less properties non-conforming if we do it with the half acre mm -hmm. and the 100 foot frontage. And, they're, and the residence is allowing more uses in there through special exception than this allows in there, the, the one, number one, through special exception. And, we, and if we put a residence, we have to leave what the residence is written. We can change it somewhat, I suppose, but it applies to the entire town and residential property. After all this, let's get a sense of where the people are now, what they feel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I guess the show of hands again. Um, are we walking down the right road, uh, Village Business District 1, with the modifications? Right, the modification is not allowing the multifamily. Yeah, not allowing multifamily, right. In, 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 in it looks like the, the majority of the room is in consensus with that, so we're going in the right direction. On that okay. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, yes. what about showing hands of those who don't? Like um, we could, but I mean, you know, it's... Well, I think it'd only be fair. <laughs> we aren't taking a vote or, on, in that regard, not an official I vote. mean, just to look at them. <laughs> Jane would like a show of hands as to who does not think we're going down the right path with Village Business District 1. Anybody? Nobody, I guess. Okay. okay. Thank you. Good. I feel great. Yeah. Well, it was. You're right. Yeah. But we just wanted to make sure that we weren't leaving somebody out here that, that needed to, something to say. I don't want to be ambushed. So, okay. So if we modify that village business district one into one district, apply it to what it would apply to the existing one down here in town and apply to the new one up there. So what about the district boundaries? I was talking about, I know some of you guys couldn't see what I was talking about up there, but the district boundaries, and I'm going to get that map and put it out here. Yeah. here, but nothing is probably going to change in any of those properties. These are residential, going to stay that way. And that little piece doesn't make sense to spot zone that. It's, Scott, Scott, yes. What's, what's the southern boundary again? What's the southern boundary that you're proposing? Airport Road, and, and, south and to, to, let's see, where can we put it? South yes. to the southern side of Aviation Way, where okay. it comes out onto 32. Okay. And that would be the new proposed district. What's down on the bottom and all that blue? Yeah. Down on the bottom here, that's where the, uh, yeah, Cheshire Signs used to be. It's a machine shop or something now. Right there, and then, of course, beyond that is where... Frasers and Sons. Yeah, Frasers and Sons and a lot of larger businesses down here. 
So, and that's business now. So that probably would, and, and it makes sense, that should remain business, I would think. Right. Yes. So what about going down to there? To the Yeah. Down to here? No, we're at the beginning of it. The word probably around the end of section scares me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So why don't we go down to the very top of that little box triangle? Oh, right there. Yeah, right there. Right there. Yeah. That's where the dam is. And I think we had yeah. talked about going to the dam. Yeah. 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 It doesn't make any difference. That can be zoned out, you know, all the way down to there. Yeah. 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 Totally restricted to height and mm -hmm. development it because is. it's within the glide path of the east-west uh, rundown. It is, yeah. Nothing. So nothing can go. Really, can go in there. It can't. But I use the word probably, and that didn't. That didn't go too well. Probably. <laughs> 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 and it, you know, it's within the just within the within the city of Keene's holding. But it, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference whether it doesn't. Matter. It doesn't make any difference whether we uh, if we. Don't do it because it's zoned business right now. So we have zoning in there now. We can still change the zoning on that airport property regardless. Yeah. It just ensures that it doesn't, that, that something in the future doesn't change and they can say, well, uh, City of Keene's going to be putting something, you know, say they discontinue runway 32 right there and they want to put in something else. They never would, but I'm just saying. So I think they're probably correct. We probably ought to continue it right down to the dam like we were talking about before. Sure. Let's do it. And then it protect that side as well. You know, they're all residential over here. And again, it doesn't allow the airport anything more to do. It allows them less to do there. But whether they do it or not, anyway, it just ensures that they wouldn't. This is over the west side, not to include the east side as well. And just the west side, because the east side is going to remain residential by the looks of it there. And that's all it is is residential. Anyway. Yeah. What make sure. Thank you. Uh, sir, you had a question. Oh, no. Did you come up from the mic? I, w I was just wondering if Swansea had the authority, oh, you, you Jim, Jim Peel, if I was just wondering if Swansea had the authority to zone airport land. No, I didn't. Could you say your name one more time? Jim Peel, P-E-A-L-E. -E. Jim Peel. Peel. Oh, Peel. Peel. Okay, thank okay, you. Thanks. Go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt it. I, I was just wondering, as a matter of legality, as whether Swansea had the authority to zone airport land, but I guess we do. We do. Yeah. Is yeah. it leased to the city? We've got to zone all business yeah, now. Okay. We've zoned the entire thing business, so yeah, we do have the authority to do that. Of course, they try and override us. They've done that before, try to, but we hold yeah. the upper hand. If we rezone what I will refer to as the tab all the way down. To uh, here? Yes. To the dam. Will we have to deal with the FAA on that? Mm -mm. No. No. It, um, the FAA has to be dealt with development there. So if the airport or the city of Keene wants to develop something on there, they have to go through the FAA. For approval there because of the height restrictions like Richard said yeah. and any other restrictions they may have there but it's right in that glide slope and that flight path so I think it's 3-2 there 3-4 but no I mean they have to abide by that so so now we're talking about leaving that business and actually it's only halfway business business goes through that piece of property right about there and just considering leaving that business there and this business, that entire piece business, instead of a triangle right in the center of it being residential like it is right now. You can see, see that, I don't know, you see that triangle right there? That's in the middle of that property. It's, re it's residential in the middle of that property right there. And that's not even how they're using that property. Huh. That one there. Why are we changing it? We aren't. We're leaving it the way it is. I know it was it was set to change, but that's what that hashtag means. Oh, not changing it. Oh, not changing it? Um, if, we, if we don't. But that that Edgewood is an allowable use in the business zone. It won't be an allowable use in the village business district one zone. It'll be grandfathered in. But it won't be an allowable use. They will have to. If they do something different there, they'd have to go through a bunch of hoops, ZBA and... Well, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding, because the, the, what you're showing or pointing out was 
below the access to the terminal road. Here? Yeah, yeah. from there down. From airport road down. Yes. So why not include the northern part? I'm just saying not include it because it makes sense to keep this strip business. We're, we're, no. we're business all the way through here. This is business all the way through here, right to there. And that is a business. Yes, that's that's Santa Gravel. It region. used to be the Santa Gravel. That and is a business. You have three houses. Right on the very tip of it, right there, which is own business now. Actually, those are in Keene. Now, well, part of them are in Keene, actually, because the line looks like it goes yeah, right there. Right where Easton and home used to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's in Keene. So we can't touch that. But I was just proposing that because you know the major what we're protecting are the residences down and through here, right there, and they're other than Edgewood, you know, they're residential units, but they're you know they're probably going to stay like that. Nobody's over here uh, explaining that they don't want Edgewood there, and Edgewood I guess isn't explaining that they don't want these guys here. You know, that's not to me anyways. That's not a problem. I don't know about the rest of the here. Just speak right up. What if you have a very enterprising owner of Edgewood Apartments and someone offers them a good offer to put in a multifamily? Yeah. Then it's, it's a possibility. It changed it. It's a big possibility. However, you know, it's this this is the congested area right here we're talking about. You see right right there, all these these now, are yes. technologies now. And this well this is probably not gonna be it's not residential use now and it's probably not going to be there. So yes, they could put a multi housing which wouldn't be any different from what's in there now. Much different from what's in there now. It could be bigger. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes it could. It could be like what's over by Gamarlo. Well, again, it, to, me, it, to me, it boils down to fairness. Again, to fairness. You know, you, well, you do. Some people don't. I, I don't know. Fairness, yes, and I believe in being fair. But then sometimes the people you're dealing with are not fair either. So, I, I, is that a concern? Yeah, my concern is that. The whole character of that north of that road can change the character of that whole neighborhood if somebody came in. But this is the neighborhood. That square is the neighborhood. I this is this the neighborhood. neighborhood. So, say, uh, and, uh, Trader Joe's wants to come in. Okay, they buy up that par the parcel of land. This now they put in a huge supermarket. Now you change the entire character of that village because you're increasing traffic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The village is down here. Is I'm talking the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm considering Edgewood part of the village. As far as this, this village business one, as far as that village from the Keen Line on Route 32 all the way down to part of the village. Yeah, yes. 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 Well, then, what's the board think? Because we can easily just put it right up through there, like we worked out on there. Yes, our, yes our, do our that. That's what here is. I think the move in the state right now is to go to multi-family housing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that is a change in use in my mind. And well, I don't know how, how many acres is this? Um, yeah, it's like seven acres. Yeah, seven point seven acres. So I think we have. Oh. So what do you think? Go straight down. Bring, it, bring the new zone from here all the way down like we've got a zone? Yeah. Yes. 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 Victoria? Yes. Yes. Jane? Yes, I think Richard? so. Obviously. Yeah. Okay, see what you started, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in agreement. Yeah, so we'll leave it like that. <laughs> the, it's the keen line. That's a very keen line right there. So it would be from the divide, from the keen line all the way down through to the dam down there. So we're changing that from the Keen Line to the dam on that <laughs> west side. And on the east side, though, it goes from the border of that former Whitcomb's property down to Lake Street. It goes from here about now. So are we saying it should go the board members again? Should it go right from there, just like we have it shown, all the way down to Lake Street, like that? Are we, are we opening ourselves up to a fight with that, where the other borders seem like we're all already 
could you come up to the mic? Let's discuss that. That sounds like something to discuss. Sound, no, it sounds like a good topic to discuss. Kristen Chesley, again. Um, at the other border that you had, from the airport road all yep. the way down, it seems like there isn't anybody existing right now that would have a problem with that. If we include the pit oh, and yep. include that multifamily existing there, are we opening ourselves up to possibly a fight and getting it turned down because we're including too much? Um, That's my Right, but it limits the use of that property in the future. So they're grandfathered as, a, as they are, but as a property owner of it, it limits their ability in the future, so therefore could limit the value of their property in the future. Yep. That's my concern, right. is right. that we could be, you know, kicking ourselves. Well, they can always apply for a balance. Right. They can. Right. And I would hope that they can, the board but is saying this is the existing use, and as long as it's something It's similar. a fairly really large piece of property, so you could put something fairly large there. They could. They could. Well, so yeah. your, your point is that, you know, are we um, taking their, too much of their uses for their property? That's your point. Too much of the use yeah. already away from okay. them. I don't want to limit people's use. I want to limit yep. ridiculous nope. uses it's gotta in be fair. our yeah. area. It be fair. I also don't want to fight ourselves in, in, in trying to take the yeah. Right. You don't right. Have a negative atmosphere when it comes to voting. I don't want it to become a fight where they say, you know, because that. It's a good point. And okay. valid point. That's just the way I yeah. <laughs> Jane, what were you going to say? You were going to say something. Or you forgot. Well, I've said it. I've said it to you before. It it may be negative for someone that wants to develop it, but if it is developed, it'll be negative for all the people who want their homes there and want to enjoy their homes there. So there's two sides to all of that. And under the current atmosphere of housing, 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 Swansea building housing seems to me more than anybody. So that one is right out there, which would be a great use of it if you like that kind of thing. But if they can have, they're not here tonight either. That's why I was, what right. I was gonna well, say. But they could show up when they see this proposal well, and then they could they put could. a fight against it that could leave this open for They very well could, could but we still need- to additional proposals. We need to have our regulations. We, none of us like regulations, especially when they're against us, but we need to have regulations that are for us, that are for Swansea. Mm -hmm. So this, this is just a proposal that the town will eventually be voting on. That's correct. Yep. The town would take the, res the responsibility, and if it's voted and the affirmative, then it becomes, uh, if you will, a law, not subject really to, cha uh, to challenge. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, more well, source of challenge. Yes, Pardon me? Well, so, so what if we just leave it the way that one property on the right there, the party currently is half and half? That would limit their use. Leave it to half the business down here, yeah, yeah, and then half the business over here. There's a triangle somewhere in there in this residential. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, they all the way from 12 to 32. They they don't own on on Road 12. They they uh, the property line is there, so this is still business in through here, but it's just that the property line doesn't go. They don't have frontage on Road 12, and it changes. If something changes, you know, they do have frontage there. So again, they have the business there and there, and not in there. Because it's whether uh, the dump company that has access on 12. It could it's be. Not not access. Access. So why not leave the right hand side the way it is now and then change the left hand to whatever we're going to change the rest of it to, which is leading yes. towards the village business district that one. Right area. from the Keen line back to whatever that, that yeah. distance might yeah. be, right from that area there? Correct. Yeah, yeah. we could do that. Problem. What do you think, Jane? Uh, time's up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Always want to know. Richard, the proposal is just to, to leave it as we're, let's see, I don't know if that's 100, 200 feet, whatever it is, up right up to the Keen line there, as to the new district, 
and the old district course business would be right up through there or something like that. I'm seeing a line. Is that is that what you were referring to? Now, I don't know. Line on I don't really know what that line is there, unless it was from me doing my pen on there I or not. I think you drew it. He <laughs> drew I might have drawn it there. Yeah, could be. But, but basically, that's that 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 line. That's probably what that happened. line is. This but right that might be what it's like. Would be like right there. That, that's where it's so. Where it's so really if that if right. that were done, then the if, if it were the, to the new yeah. new zone there, leave that as it is. And include this one into the new zone. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, it's split right there. That oh, line is business. Oh, yeah. Taking a parcel of land. And this would be residential. And putting it to shoot the zone. Well, it already is now. You know, but I'm so. It may be, but it just means I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, well, there's yeah. plenty of stuff I don't like. It's, it's well, fun. what's your opinion? <laughs> it's probably not the best practice, yeah. but it happens a lot. And we have a uh, really. In our zoning, and I don't recall the exact dream. Remember a couple of years ago, we tried to clean up some of the zoning down by the patent dealerships there. What's, what's being discussed? I mean, we got to bring this meeting open here. we got to keep the meeting open. You're showing where that triangle is up in there? Yeah. Okay. The 200 people going into there, there's nothing like this. Other than a cut that goes down into the, the base of the like this plan. Yeah, you're talking about the topography, the topography of the lot. Correct. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see where the 200 people are. Whatever the residents want. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're relying on us to kind of straighten it out for them, so so that they can see what we're talking about. The 200 feet in, 500 feet in, it's basically the same hole. Yeah, it is. Right. Right. It is. It's a big hole in the ground over there. So I don't. <clears throat> it would take a lot of money to fill that in. It would. Oh, yeah. we're not going to do that. Is the house somewhere in there? You're saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's a house. I, I don't know if it's used, but there is a white yeah. house. Kind of overgrown. Okay. Yeah. Oh, kind of. <laughs> so I know let's get back to this side. What did we decide on this side? Uh, New zone, all the way down, key line down. Okay, yeah. we got that. We got that. Okay. So that leaves us this side here. Village business one, right from there, right down through that line, right through there. Yeah, we, we have, that to, be, we have there. to be fair to those property owners too. Yep. yep. All right. Then it's village business one. Yeah. Okay, you got it. All the way down to. Okay. The, all the way down to Lake Street there on this side, on the east side. Yeah. On the east side it's Lake Street. Yep. Right. And then the other side is all the way down to the dam. North the key line, the key line to, the to the dam. Yeah, okay. Looks like we've got it laid out. I guess that's probably what we'll, we'll go on anyways. No, it was thin breath. So we're, we're talking about bed and breakfast, right? Uh, right? Rooms you can have in a bed and breakfast, and bed and breakfasts are allowed in other zones, I think. Let's see. Um, yeah. I do believe in yeah. several well, zones. Yeah, so. we're allowed in existing building business, yeah. a special accepted exception in residence and in permitted in business. So we, we can't, we probably shouldn't anyway, uh, specify in one zone what they can be without being the same in the other zone, if it's a bed and breakfast. So if we do it across the board, it goes across the board. Limit the number of, of rooms to, I don't know, how many does that one have over there? Well, I was just going to say, aren't they going to be limited by parking anyway? Because look at the house over there that's a bed and breakfast. They could have at least 30 bedrooms in there probably, but their parking yeah. doesn't allow them to have 30, 30 yeah. different people there to occupy them. And, and that's the way we address multifamily in other parts of the zone too, where it's not specified the density, it's it's uh, done by parking. If you have room for the parking, and again, that is what would yeah. If you have room for the parking in there, we could. What no? Who brought that up? Uh, what number were you thinking of? <laughs> oh yeah. <coughs> I thought it was one of us that brought that up. But anyway, it's. I, I think it was the last thing. Pardon me? I think it was somebody on the board. It was one of us talking about it. Well, I know Victoria just brought it up now. So if we were to do that, 
and that would be a separate issue. This would be one issue. That it would be a separate zoning change. In my opinion, it would be a separate zoning change since it covers other zones. So, um, again, I think the parking thing probably makes more sense and is probably more fair. Yeah. Because if you have a large house, um, rather than turn it into affordable housing, you say we're a workforce housing, if you can do run it as a bed and breakfast, uh, that might be a better idea for the town. And you know, if you can fit the parking in there, it might work better. So should we keep um, bed and breakfast facilities in the amended village business plan? I think yeah. so. It's an allowable use. It's a low impact use. Um, it it lets course, someone. Quite frankly, unless somebody buys a couple lots and registers, there's not many houses in my mind there that could come to a bed and breakfast because, in the business sense, you're not going to have to be able to put enough bedrooms in there to run a good business. I, I can't think of my. If somebody can uh, say different that they know there's a place that could happen. Wouldn't uh, let's. Say, wouldn't Mike be involved in something like this and also the fire department uh, oh, or density? In that, uh, um, no, we're density. Well, okay, this board, we're density. density. They would have to, okay. Not dense, but density. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, ingress from each of the places. Yeah, but again, it's all covered in site plan review. If they can't, yes. if they can't fit it in there, or if the fire department isn't happy with it, it's not going in. They don't get the approval. So we really don't need to put in the density? I don't think we need to limit it just because they're, they're, it's not one size fits all. There are they're, they're different size houses, different uses. So I think it's covered under that, under the parking density park. Let me run down the uses in this proposed and one by one. This is the proposed village business district one. Single family dwelling. Everyone think about that. Single family dwelling, okay. Restaurant, no, I don't hear any no's. Okay, bed and breakfast facility, we were just talking about that one, no no's there. Professional business offices, again, lawyers, accountants, things like that, no traffic. Um, retail business establishment, uh, personal service shop or service establishment. Banking or financial institution, which we can't see going in there, but we can leave it in there. Should we even leave it? Should we even have that in there? Banking or financial? Honestly, security? I think it's a holdover from Sarah Carpenter, who really it's in our other zone. It her to have to drive all the way into Key mm -hmm. to, to cash a check. But now we can we can do so much banking. Yeah. I, don't yeah. I don't think that belongs in there. Yeah, I don't think it belongs in there. You no, let's no. take it out. Take it out. Yes. No. I, I'm sorry with it going. Yeah. What's that? Business and financial institution. Leave it in there as it is. We're thinking about taking it out. Banking or financial institution. I'd rather take out the. I'd rather take out the retail part, business. The financial could be an in-home business, a financial advisor, or something. But we're coming home. Yes, for professional business office. Yes, it would fall under that, or the home occupation part. It would. I think the is this is a traffic generator, right? Right. I think that's what's implied. I know. Yeah, the most friends want to I don't either, so but take what, the use out. What about, yeah, what about the retail business establishment? Explain that one to me. That one would be like uh, a convenience store, some, selling retail, selling well, how things do you feel? like that. I, you can't exclude everything. It's got to be fair for I business owners, that, property owners. Retail business establishment is quite broad. It is, but those lots are quite small. I mean, you know, you can't get a huge, unless, yeah, you bought, uh, bought right. 50 lots or right. two I, lots I think, of that. I think the idea of it is the idea of a village, a village, right, where you could have some, a convenient loaf of bread or a convenient mm -hmm. gallon of milk, and maybe you could send the kid out to go get it, you know, or ride your bike. But it can't have a gas station. What's that? No, that's not no, a, a gas we'll, station. We'll get down to this. I'm not sure sure. That, that realistically it, it's a use that, would be economical for whoever Correct. owns it, you know, because you, you wouldn't have the volume likely. It, it might be a dream, you know, that we, our, our fantasy of what a village should be. Um, but I think that's the idea. Steve. I want to go back to the term uh, financial institution or banking institution. Yeah, that's what we're on. What about something as simple as a ATM like they have over at Five Vermonters. It's not in a store. 
It is global. It's a machine. It's like it's a, a machine. It's like but a soda machine. Is, you know, is, that's that, is that a financial institution? Of course not. <laughs> no? No. And would you, it's a machine. Would you, it's not an institution. Why, would you take one of those ATM machines and put it out there without having oh, like a store or something like that? Because that wouldn't last long. <laughs> it's out there. But it's it's not. Right. I wouldn't consider it a banking or financial it? institution. You can't go to an ATM and, and get a mortgage. You know, you can with a financial institution. Okay. Another question. Home occupation. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. We're running down line by line. Hold that thought. We're getting there pretty soon. <laughs> yes. Vicky Scalera. Um, what's the definition of a restaurant? I'm not anti McDonald's or anti fast food, but yeah. that would create a lot of traffic. So I'm just wondering if that's included in the restaurant our definition. Yeah, our, I think the, the state the state is any institution yeah, that is not that allowed to bring food. So it's and, so that's the state and, and, and So if something like that wanted to come in, we would have no way to say it makes too much traffic or anything like that. It's, uh, I'm it's just density den, again it's a density issue like yeah, he was talking about. Of, where if they have over here next okay. to there's a lot of I'm parking just, you know, thinking, like restaurant. when I think restaurant, I think of, yeah, you know, the dinner small. pot that doesn't make a ton of, ton of traffic. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, any, any of these things would require a site plan, wouldn't it? That is correct. Any business. Yeah. So, at that point in time, we can sift out the problem. Yeah, and then it's somebody else's problem because we probably won't be on the board anymore. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Did we leave it in? I think the consensus was no. Take it out. And by consensus, it was no. I'm going to take it out. Um, anybody want to comment on the leaving the financial and banking institution in or out? Working? Don't you think that most of the small banks are being closed down anyway? <laughs> so we're, we're considering taking it out anyways. Anybody object to that? I guess not. Pardon me? If you look along here, a lot of the lots are very small. They don't meet the one acre requirement. No, they don't. Could then, if you take raise a house, could that then become a convenience store? Could it become, become a bank? Could it, it, it could. Any of these uses, if the, the lot size is going to be one half acre and 100 foot frontage, if you have that, a half an acre and a hundred foot frontage, then it's a use by right, and uh, unless it's a special exception, by right, and you come to the planning board for a site plan review, see how everything fits on the piece of property. If it's a smaller lot, then it has to go through the zoning board of adjustment first, and they may pass it, and then it comes to the planning board again, and it'd be a, a smaller lot, they'd have to adjust it with setback, size of building, parking, so on and so forth, to make it fit in that small lot. So yeah, the smaller the lot, the less likely that something large is going to go in. We're back to home occupation. Okay. What is a home occupation? And do, we have do, we, do we have a difference? Yeah, because we have two. We have home occupation and we have home-based business. They're two separate things. One, a home occupation is something that you're you're working at in your house that your neighbors never know that you had a business in there. Uh, no employees or anything like that. Didn't change the character in the neighborhood. Nothing like that. And that's allowable by right. You don't have to go to the planning board or anything like, like that. A home occupation is different. A home occupation would, you may have trucks parked out there, you may have storage out there, uh, different things. But that does have to come to the planning board for a hearing. Okay, I'm making things up here. Well, we all do that on occasion. <laughs> I'm a blacksmith. Yeah. I, uh, I do stained glass. Um, I do home baking for craft fairs. You know, take your little yes. You know, your little 
hobby, and at what point does that become a home-based business versus a home -based hobby? At that point, if there's a question about it, they come before the planning board, and the planning board, through a vote, decides whether it's a home-based business or a home occupation. And just by questioning the applicant, you know, do you have a trip delivery truck? Do you have customers coming in all day long or something like that? And then that's how it'll get done. To we actually have it defined. So a home yeah, occupation is a non-apparent use. In other words, invisible, of no more than 50% of a dwelling. So it's, um, it's not the entire building. Or an accessory structure, no more than 300 square feet of a dwelling or an accessory structure for the purpose of generating income. And then there's additional requirements are spelled out in another section of the, the ordinance. And then a home-based business is a commercial use not otherwise permitted in the zone conducted by not more than three people, at least one of whom is an inhabitant of the dwelling which is clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the premises for dwelling purposes and does not change the residential character thereof. So they're pretty self yeah. idea. But I just want to, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of both pleasant things like a... Uh, That's what we're doing here. We're trying to hire And that. a plexus, which yeah. could be, could be obnoxious to a man. Uh, I object to that. <laughs> I, 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 I do a lot of blacksmithing and I object to it. <laughs> I, I said could be. <laughs> okay, yeah, but that's what we're doing. We're ironing those things out. We're supposed to be bringing those uh, questions like that. Anyways, that see that are uh, that covers the uses, the allowable by right uses, and then. The uh, special exception ones are recreational facility conducted as a business, only when such business activity is conducted indoors, and a daycare facility. So those two, and anybody have any objection to those being on there? I guess not. And child care facilities are something we still need a lot of. Yeah, and, and they'd fit in small neighborhoods. Like that. state regulations on how many children you can have, and how big yeah. a yard is. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's the good uses there, and again, we're going to discontinue the multifamily dwelling uh, part of it there, that's X out. So, what still is, what still would be allowed in there would be accessory uses, which are clearly incidental to the uses permitted, and uh, also two-family dwelling, duplexes are allowed there for two-family dwelling, yeah, it's one and a half acres unless connected to public sewer. And accessory buildings having a footprint of 1,000 square feet or greater, or 25 feet or more in height, would be. A, these are all special exceptions. Um, let's see. And then we got the lot size again, which is one half acre in size, uh, 100 feet frontage. Front setback is 30 feet, typical, and 20 feet from the side and the rear property lines. And then there's the last one. Yeah, no structure shall exceed 35 feet unless approved before this provision was enacted. So it was a height restriction in that one, which is not a problem at all. I, I don't have a problem with it anyway. Does anybody else? No. <clears throat> okay. So, comments. Anybody have any comments? Pardon me? Go for it. All right. One question. If, if you put this on the back and if it is approved, is it that going to be Yeah, when it's approved, it is. Okay. Yeah, if and when it's approved, right, it is. Yeah. So what we'll probably do then is, if Julius would be so kind as to probably type up and, and get together what we discussed tonight and a, a final uh, draft of what we're doing there, we'll probably have one more meeting on that before we get to the hearing. Because when we have a public hearing, we can't really change it very much. We can change small things in it, but not a lot. So if we have one draft set up, have another meeting, discuss that draft, and that'll probably be at a regular planning board meeting, probably won't be at a special meeting like this. And then after that, um, we would have a public hearing and they go on and so forth. That's the procedure. Thanks to you. Yeah, you, you started early for us. We usually don't start the zoning stuff until like five minutes before we have to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. So if there's if there's nothing else from the 
public here. Well, thank you for coming. If nothing else, just one quick question. Yeah. Not having to deal with what we're talking about, other than Brad Chesley. Just a second. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Brad Chesley. I live on Sylvan Way. How many articles uh, have you already voted on that are going to be on the ballot? None. Or None yet. <laughs> Thank you. We really appreciate your response. No, we really appreciate you coming and uh, bringing all this stuff out to us. It's, it helps us. You know. I guess we won't go there, right? Yeah. If there's nothing else from the board, uh, and if there isn't, then a motion to adjourn will be in order. I'll make that motion and Jane will second it. Okay, a motion by Jane <laughs> to adjourn, seconded by Jane. Awesome. All those in favor, take the thing off.